Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu Alaikum. Welcome to the channel. This is in continuation of a series in which we are talking about different diseases which can affect the nasal septum. So let's start today's discussion. Before embarking upon the discussion, you are requested to subscribe the channel. So today we will talk about septal hematoma. As you know that this is the collection of the blood under the perichondrium or periosteum of nasal septum. We know that the cartilage is a avascular structure and it gets its blood supply from the overlying mucoperichondrium. So if that mucoperichondrium is being elevated from the cartilage, there can be ischemia of the cartilage and this blood which is usually secondary to trauma it becomes collected between the overlying mucoperichondrium or mucoperiosteum and the underlying cartilage or the bone usually the cause is nasal trauma this nasal trauma can be assaults traffic road traffic accidents or sports injuries it can be secondary to septal surgeries like uh, septoplasty or SMR and if a patient is having some bleeding disorder there can be spontaneous bleeding and there can be collection of this blood under the mucoperichondrium. There will be bilateral nasal obstruction and uh, that will lead to mouth breathing due to the swelling which will be bilateral. Patient may feel frontal headache. There can be sense of pressure over the nasal bridge and on examination there will be smooth, rounded, reddish swelling of the septum in both nasal cavities and it will be soft and fluctuant on palpation. And this is the diagrammatic representation. You can see that uh, this is the septal cartilage, bluish in color and this, these linings, these are mucoperichondrium and it has been elevated from the underlying cartilage and you can see the uh, different segments of the cartilage it is not continuous so because it is secondary to trauma so there can be a fracture of the cartilage as well and this is the collection of the blood so mucoperichondrium and cartilage in between the two is this collection of the blood and we know that the caudal border of nasal septum proper it does not reach up to the columella so Due to gravity, even if there is trauma on one side, this blood will go caudally and along the caudal border it will come on the other side as well. So on examination, as you can see in the picture on the right side, there will be swelling of the nasal septum bilaterally which will lead to the bilateral nasal obstruction. So there can be you know in uh, after uh, this uh, examination and diagnosis is confirmed if it is a small sized hematoma we can go aspiration of this hematoma with a wide bore needle under aseptic conditions and if the hematoma is a large one then we have to go for formal incision and drainage with a knife and this incision uh, uh, should be along the floor, parallel to the floor of the nasal cavity from anterior to posterior. And we should remove a small piece of mucosa from the lower side where we have incised it and uh, clotted blood should be removed and then we have to do the anterior nasal packing. This piece of septal mucosa it has to be removed because so, so that the serous or even if bleeding occurs again it should not be collected and it should be drained from that and the nose is packed from both sides just like we do in anterior nasal packing to prevent the reaccumulation and of course we will need intravenous antibiotics broad spectrum like amoxicillin or first generation cephalosporin uh, to avoid the infections as long as the uh, anterior nasal packing is in situ. 
we know that middle third of the face is a danger area including the nose and upper lip so if hematoma remains there misdiagnosed or not treated in time it can lead to abscess formation and there can be intracranial complications uh, like cavernous sinus thrombosis or meningitis which are life threatening then if this hematoma it becomes organized so it can lead to a permanently thickened nasal septum and if we know that blood is a good cultural media for bacteria so if it becomes infected you know, within 48 to 72 hours there can be infection so hematoma could have been converted into septal abscess which can lead to necrosis of the cartilage leading to septal perforation and there can be depression of the nasal dorsum later on which deformity we call it as saddle nose deformity septal abscess as the name indicates it is an infection collection of the pus again in the same plane that is mucopericondrium and underlying cartilage it can be secondary infection from septal hematoma that due to trauma septal hematoma occurred it remain undiagnosed or untreated and it led to infection which led to abscess formation or it can be secondary to frontal of the nose or the upper lip or acute infection such as typhoid or measles can lead to septal abscess non examination there will be again a bilateral nasal swelling but this swelling will not be reddish in color it will be fluctuant bilateral causing bilateral nasal obstruction with pain and tenderness over the bridge of the nose because this is an infection now pus has occurred so there will be fever high grade fever with chills can be there and frontal headache very severe skin over the nose will be red and swollen smooth bilateral swelling of the nasal septum with fluctuation as we just saw in the picture as well septal mucosa of course will be congested and there can be some mandibular lymph nodes enlargement and on palpation these lymph nodes will be tender early drainage is required now this time the incision is made in the most dependent part of the abscess pus and necrosed pieces of the cartilage are removed by suction and then a small wick is placed in that cavity that is between the incision which we have given so the mucopericondial flap is raised underlying cartilage is necrosed that necrosed pieces have been removed and there in the cavity a small wick is being placed and then on the sides anterior nasal packing is done uh, to put on the pressure the advantage of this wick is because this is uh, infected cavity so this wick will act as a uh, suction for that so that drainage of uh, any pus formation in next 24 to 48 hours it is being drained and there is no collection secondly when we will remove the anterior nasal packing through this wick we can examine that cavity again without incising the mucosa so this if this wick is not placed then we have to reopen the incision for next 2 3 days uh, to do the suction of the cavity and any further collection should be removed and of course we need broad spectrum systemic antibiotics to avoid the infection depression of the cartilaginous dorsum can lead to supra tip depression then there can be septal perforation and of course this is a danger area so there can be meningitis and cavernous sinus which are the very lethal intracranial complications then there is another entity which we call as nasal synechia or nasal adhesions the adhesions can form between the septum and the lateral wall especially after nasal septal surgery and at the same time if we have done the turbinate surgeries 
so two rough surfaces are there epithelium will grow over from anterior to posterior over the nasal septum and similarly from anterior to posterior over the lateral nasal wall but if these two rough surfaces they come in contact by the secretions or by the blood clot uh, so that it acts as a scaffold so that the epithelium which will grow for the healing of the wound instead of going backward in straight line along the that secretions which will be acting as a bridge between two epithelial surfaces the epithelium can grow from the lateral wall to the medial wall which is the nasal septum or vice versa so that there will be a fibrous band between the septum and the lateral wall there can be adhesions between the middle turbinate and the lateral wall and usually it follows nasal surgery and nasal packing because nasal packing itself if it is dry gauze which we use for packing it can cause the laceration of the mucosal surfaces and there can be rough surfaces and again adhesions can occur and this these adhesions will lead to nasal obstruction which can lead to sinusitis and headache also and as you can see on this side this is a fibrous band which is connecting the nasal septum with the lateral nasal wall so this is what we call as nasal synechia or nasal adhesions excision and release of the adhesions it can be done with the knife with the help of diathermy or bipolar cautery or even laser can be used but more important is that once we have released these adhesions we should put some barrier between these two rough surfaces till the epithel normal epithelialization in normal alignment has occurred so to avoid that we can put some elastic sheets between these two surfaces or we can use dental wax plates these elastic sheets these are available commercially if nothing is available even then we can take uh, uh, this uh, glucose bottle and that we can cut it as a sheet and sterilize it and we can put it in the nasal cavity for at least 7 to 10 days prevention is better than cure so after septal surgery if we do proper perioperative cleaning of the nasal cavity so that there is no collection of secretions or bleeding or crusts which should not act as a bridge or as a scaffold between two epithelium surfaces then lubrication of the nasal packing while before insertion so that it becomes soft it is not rough it is not traumatizing the epithelial surfaces or after septal surgeries we can use septal splints as a preventive measure regularly so with that we come to end of today's discussion so thank you very much for watching and you are requested to like share and subscribe the channel